So in this lab exercise, we're going to practice setting the X tool offset for the lathe. And it's that X tool offset that actually determines the diameter of the part that we're going to make. When you get to the lathe, you're going to want to fill out your safe operator checklist. Get to the safe operator checklist. We're going to go through the required steps. The first step is to simulate in the CAM software. Now we simulate in the CAM software so that we know what the computer thinks the program is going to do. And, um, and so I've got my Esprit open here. Go to the simulation window, simulate. And so we see, I'll go through that again a little bit slower. So we see a turning tool comes in and it faces off the nose of the part. Then it reduces the diameter of the part. And the cutoff tool comes in and cuts off the part with a chamfer. The next step on the checklist is to set the tool offsets. So let's get over here and let's talk about setting this tool offset. So I've simulated in the CAM software, I need to set the tool offsets. And so in this exercise, we're actually only having you set the X offset for one of the tools. And we've already preset the, uh, the Z offsets for all of the tools that get used and the X offset for the other tool. Now, before we set the X offset for the tool, or before we set any of the offsets for the tools or for the workpiece, we're going to want to make sure that the workpiece is in a, uh, in a position where we can use it. For this operation, we're going to use the square. It's already set. It should be set at an inch and a half. We're going to use the square. We'll open the, uh, the jaws on the lathe. I'm in e-stop. I'm going to reset the e-stop. Once the e-stop is reset, I'm going to open the jaws on the lathe by stepping on the foot pedal. I'm going to pull the bar out, push it back in until the uh, T-square is touching the chuck jaw and hold it in that position while I step on the pedal again to close the chuck jaws. With that done, now the stock is in the position where we want it to be during the, during the program. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into the handle jog mode. Oh, no, the next thing I'm going to do, I see I'm going to change tools. So I'm going to go to the MDI mode. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to actually close the door of the lathe. So when I change the tools, stuff won't come out. I'm going to go to MDI. I'm going to say T4. This is tool four is the tool that I want to set the X offset for. And either turret forward or turret reverse will cause the turret to unlock, rotate the tool around. Now, something that's really important to do when you're gonna do that tool change, you see that the tool turret comes out and rotates around when it does the tool change. You need to look inside the lathe and make sure that none of these are gonna run into something like that while the turret is rotating. It's always a good idea to, uh, to close the door and use the zero return, hit the, uh, the G28 or home button here. And it makes sure that it sends the tool turret all the way to its home position before you do one of those tool changes. Especially if you're inexperienced and you haven't got a lot of experience about how far out it's gonna go, how far it's gonna rotate on each pass. So I've got tool four in the cutting position. You'll notice that that's, we're looking at the bottom of tool four here and it's at an angle here as compared to you know vertical or in and out that's perfectly normal the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the spindle spinning in order to get the spindle spinning <clears throat> we'll again close the door we're still in that mdi mode and i'm going to type well actually it says s500 right here so if it doesn't say that you can hit erase program let's do s 500 and enter and I'll put that there. I'm going to hit reset and I'm going to hit cycle start. What that has done now is it has commanded the lathe that next time it gets the command to spin the spindle either forward or in reverse, it will spin at 500 RPMs. I can command it to spin forward by pressing the forward button down here. I can stop it by pressing the stop button. I can command reverse by pressing the reverse button. Um, don't do that in this lab. So we're gonna start the spindle spinning forward. 
then we're going to move to this handle jog mode. I'm going to select the increment here for uh, 0 0.01 inches per click on the handle. So 0 0.01 inches per click. Every time I click the handle, it's going to move 0 0.01 inches, but I have to tell it which direction I want to go. Z on the lathe is in and out like this. So it's from the front of the part to the back of the part. X in the lathe is in and out on the part's diameter. And so first I want to move in the Z direction. And to do this, I'm going to have to actually look in through the, uh, through the glass so I can see what I'm doing. And so step over here to the glass with me. Stepping over to the glass and now we're looking inside the lathe. I'm going to handle jog in the Z direction by turning the handle. I'm going to change the handle jog in the X direction. Bring it down a little bit closer. I'm going to switch back to Z, move a little bit closer. And as I get closer, I want to, uh, I want to make sure that I am moving slowly and not going to accidentally run into something. Any closer, I'm going to come back in the X again. And I'm going to put this so that the tool tip is just a little bit in front of the workpiece. Then I'm going to change back to the Z and I'm going to change my jog increment to one thousandth of an inch per click. And I'm going to slowly go in Z until I touch the part. So I'm touching the part. I've just made a chip. Now I'm going to jog slowly until there's about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of the nose of the part that I've changed the diameter on. I'm going to slowly jog in the negative Z direction without touching the X until I'm off the workpiece. And once I'm off the workpiece, I can increase the increment if I'd like to, but I want to move the tool back away a little bit here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button on the control. So I've stopped the spindle. I've stopped the tool motion. And with that, we can actually open up the door again when nothing's moving. In the next step here, will be to measure the diameter that we just made on that part. To measure that diameter, I'm going to use a digital micrometer. I just got, I power it on. I'm going to bring it over the workpiece. Make sure it's open enough to fit around the diameter that I made. I'm going to bring it over the workpiece. I'm going to turn the knob on the very end. until the spindle doesn't move anymore. You hear the clicking noise there is the ratchet that tells us that we're on, we've made contact with the part. I bring it off the part and I can read the diameter that it made there. So I've got 87285. Okay. Back at the machine tool controller. Back at the machine tool controller, we're going to make sure that we're in the offset screen. And we're going to make sure that we have tool geometry offset selected. We're using tool four. If that tool is not highlighted, you can use the arrow keys to move up and down to make sure that you're on tool four. And we want to make sure that it's the X that we're changing. So I can move that back around, but I want to make sure that I'm on tool four for X. I'm going to press the X diameter measure button. And then I'm going to delete whatever information is in there. And I'm going to type the measurement that I had, which was 0 0.8727. 
Okay, and I'm gonna press enter. And when I press enter, watch how this number here updates. Yes, I wanna change it bigger than that. And so that number was 11 point something before, now it's 12.4727. So now that we've set the X diameter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the door again, press the G28, the home button, we will send the turret all the way up, all the way over back to its home position. We're going to go to memory, current commands. No, we're going to go to memory, setting graphics. We press the graphics button twice to get us in the graphics mode. And we're going to do cycle start to watch the simulation of the program. And so you see the turn tool came in, faced off the front, reduced the diameter, cut off the part. So now we've got a view through the window. I'm in current commands. I've got my rapid speed set to 25%. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cycle start. As the tool comes over, it's gonna then come down. I'm gonna hit feed hold. That's still pretty far away from the part. So I'm gonna reduce my rapid speed to about 5% again. Do cycle start and feed hold again as the tool gets closer. At this point, I'm looking inside to see how far the tool is away from the workpiece and to make sure that it doesn't look like it's about to crash into anything. Then I want to come back over here to the machine tool controller and I want to look at the distance to go. So it says that it's going to go negative 0.9789 inches. I look back inside. I say, all right, I believe that it can do that in the X direction without crashing. So I'm gonna go ahead and press cycle start. It faced off the front of the part. Reducing the diameter of the part. And the tool is pulling away. I'm gonna go back to my 25% rapid. changes to tool 10, which is the cutoff tool and comes over towards the part. As it's coming down, again, I stop it. I can go to that 5% rapid, let it get a little closer. And I'm gonna look inside again. So it's not crashing into the chuck. It's a little bit off the part. I'm gonna look again at my distance to go. It says negative 0.33. Look inside, I believe that that's possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and press cycle start and let it finish the cutoff. Go back to 25% rapid, it's gonna go home and signal that the program has operated successfully. We can open up the door and retrieve our part. Okay, so you finished this part, but in this lab we're gonna cut two different parts. So what I want you to do, go over here, finish filling out your operator checklist, submit it, click submit another response, fill in your name, And the time, oh. And the machine tool that you're on. And ME1800 lab. All right, and so it is gonna be a non-standard operation just like last time. We're gonna simulate in the CAM software. It's going to be the same program we've already simulated in the CAM software. We're going to set the tool offsets. Now, we've already set the tool offset, so we don't need to set the tool offset again. But what I do want to do is come over here to the offset screen again. Get on my tool offset page. I'm going to select tool number four. So that's the tool that made this outside diameter on the part. I'm going to select tool number four. And I'm going to come over here. I'll press one more time on the offset button. Select tool number four, and I'm going to come over here, pressing the right arrow until I get to tool offset 
for for the X tool wear. Now I'm going to type in minus point zero five zero as the tool wear number for this tool. Then I put that in there. I'm going to say that I've set my tool offset. We need to set the work offsets. Now, the work offset was already set for us by the PLA, but what we do need to do is we need to make sure that we pull the stock material out like we did last time. So I'll step on the foot pedal, reach in with my T-square, step on the foot pedal again. So now I've pulled the stock material out the amount that it needs to be. I'm gonna go over here to simulate on the controller. Memory, graphics twice, press start, simulate on the controller. Now, I didn't simulate on the cam software again because I knew what the program looked like in the cam software. I did simulate on the controller again because I changed one of the offsets and I want to make sure that it didn't move some of the tools around. In it. I want to make sure that I didn't do it incorrectly so that it would have made something crash. So that looks good. So I simulated on the controller. To reduce my rapid rate, make sure that it's at least 25%. You can go with 5% if you feel more comfortable. And then as I'm running the program, of course, I'm going to check the distance to go again. But before I do that, since it is a non-standard operation, I'm going to have the PLA come over again. And he's, the PLA is going to check that offsets, make sure that I did the, uh, the tool wear offset correctly. Didn't miss a decimal place there, for example and make sure that the other offsets still look normal, make sure that we didn't inadvertently change something. Once that's done, we go to memory, current commands, close the door, look in through the window, and watch the machine operate again. Here we are looking in through the window again, and Again, it changes to tool four. Tool four comes over towards the part, comes down. I stop it. I check my distance to go. I cycle start. It's gonna to change to tool 10. Tool 10 is gonna come over. As it's coming down, we stop again with check our distance to go. Everything looks good still. And we go ahead and open the door and retrieve our part from inside the lathe. At this point, you're done with the lab exercise. You should have two pieces that look similar but have different diameters. Um, go ahead and press the emergency stop if you haven't already done that, and make sure you close out your operator checklist. Check distance to go and submit. So now you've finished this lab exercise. Grab a small plastic bag, the PLAs should have those, and put these parts in your box. In, and put these parts in the box with your, ah, screw it. You know which box to put them in.